If you're checking out this video, you're probably struggling or frustrated with leveling your 3D print bed, and trust me, I've been there. But I'm gonna go through all the techniques that I've learned over four years of 3D printing on how you can get really good bed adhesion and that perfect bed level using paper. Before we begin, let's talk a little bit about the paper we're gonna to use to level our 3D printer. Now, most people recommend using sort of traditional printer or copy paper from our computers, and this is Hammer Mill 24 pound paper. It's a very common type of paper. And if I measure this with a micrometer, you'll notice that it measures in at about 0.11 millimeters of thickness. A lot of other pieces of paper, a little bit lower weights, 20 pound paper, may come in at about 0.10 millimeters of thickness. Here's the thing. The optimal gap that we would like on a 3D printer is 0.07 to 0.08 millimeters. So when we're using this sort of traditional paper in a little strip like this, we're actually getting a little too much gap. Now it will work and many people get fantastic results using this, but I'm sure that they're getting a little bit more tension when they're using the paper and the paper is a little stiffer and can be a little harder to sort of dial in easily. But here's what I recommend, and this is what I started using, and it was a game change for me. And as far as I know, no one else has ever really recommended using this, and that is using a thermal receipt. Now, this is a typical receipt you'll get at all your box stores, grocery stores, pizza places, um, from, you know, from gas pumps, things like that. And this is the sort of paper that is on a spool, and it rolls out, and it uses heat to transfer the image and the numbers and letters onto the paper. And if I measure this with a micrometer, you'll see that it comes in at 0.06 millimeters. So it's a little thinner and it's a little less than the optimal, but that'll give us a little bit more bite to the bed. So if you're struggling with prints midway, and they're sort of lifting up midway and failing your print, going to this thermal receipt might give you that little bit more bite to the bed that you're looking for. The other thing I find out with this thermal receipt is that because it's really thin and very lightweight and it has a little bit of a slippery surface to it, it's really reactive under the bed and the nozzle. So you'll notice when you're getting a little bit too much pinch from the nozzle to the bed, okay, so too small a gap, and it slides very easily and you can feel a lot of vibration through this piece of paper. So give a thermal receipt a try. If it doesn't work for you, you can try some other different pieces of paper. Sometimes you can even stri cut strips of it a magazine or something like that. But thermal receipt was the game change for me. Hopefully it will be for you. Now that we've talked a little bit about the paper we're gonna use, let's be sure that our 3D printer is up to spec and ready to print. So to start with, let's be sure we're at full operating temperature for the bed and the nozzle. And then let's be sure that we have a really nice and clean bed surface, either using isopropyl alcohol or maybe a wet paper towel with just a little bit of soap and water really wrung out well. Get that nice and clean, that will help with our bed adhesion. Then we wanna be sure that our eco-centric nuts and belts are adjusted properly. Everything should move nice and smooth and nice and firm. We shouldn't get any wobble in the bed or we shouldn't get any wobble at all out of the X carriage or X axis here. Everything should be nice and tight. If you're not 100% sure about this, I'll throw a reference video up here, what to check for to be sure that you're good to go. This will really affect uh, getting good first layers down. If we have things moving, it's gonna mess everything up. Okay, now let's get into the bed leveling technique, but before we do that, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It really does help me out. All right, let's get going. First thing we're gonna do is hit auto home on our 3D printer. That'll put the carriage in this position right here, the home position. And then we wanna disable stepper so that'll free everything up. We wanna move the bed forward about an inch to inch and a half and the carriage over an inch to inch and a half. The zone we're looking for here is right in this sort of sweet spot, inch, inch and a half in on both sides. We don't wanna to try to level the bed right on the corner, okay? We wanna take our receipt, fold it in half. This will just give you a little bit more rigidity, make it a little easier for getting under the bed. Now, using your eyes to see here, I can see that I have a, a pretty nice size gap, so the paper will slide over under nice and easy. Now, if you notice that we're pinching the bed, all right, and we can't get the paper under here, go ahead and just sort of, um, you know, tighten it up and create a little gap so we can get that paper under there. All right, so slide it under. All right, now here's the key here. We want to keep the paper in motion the entire time. All right, we're just moving it back and forth nice and easy like this, and we're turning the dial to, for the bed just three to five millimeters at a time. So just small little increments very slowly as we're moving the paper. And we're looking for that point to where we just start feeling a little bit of tension on the paper. All right, so you're gonna just feel nothing, 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 nothing. And then you're gonna just start feeling a little bit the drag of the paper as it's moving. That's what we're looking for here. And if you do this right, you should feel the vibration of the fans coming through here into the paper. So as you're moving it, you'll feel a little bit of like the paper almost feels like it's going All right, so just like vibrate a little bit. That's the sweet spot. That's exactly what we're looking for. We don't want to feel like it's just dragging through it, okay? Just nice. You almost feel like a little bit of vibration as we're sort of at that just really fine point of touching, and then all the little grains of the paper as we're moving it will vibrate through it with the fans. 
All right, so here we go. Keeping it moving, and we're gonna slowly turn the dial here. All right, so we feel that first point of tension. Right there, I can feel that little bit of vibration, so there's no tension here, just a couple degrees. And I feel that tension there, and you can see that the paper is moving, but it's it's reacting. So it's just a little, probably a little tight, go ahead. It's sliding nice and easy, keeping it moving. I can just barely feel it. If I turn just a little bit more, now I feel that tension. If I go a little bit more from this point, you'll notice I'm binding up the paper. That would be too tight, okay? So that means we're, our gap is too small. I'm gonna go ahead and just move that back. We have movement here, nice and easy. This is the key right here. Slowly move it. So I feel that tension right there. That's the perfect point right there. That's the sweet spot. Just a little bit of tension on the paper. We're good to go. Now, if we have this, okay, so loose. If we have, we turn this too much. Okay, so right there, that's the sweet spot. If I turn this a little bit more, and I pull, you'll notice, I really feel it dragging as it's coming out. And I can actually see on the paper where it's made a crease. It's almost made a little indentation there in the receipt. That's too tight, okay? So that means we have too, too little gap. All right, so we're gonna break that gap again. All right. So one more time here, nice and easy. The paper's moving freely. I slowly tighten up the gap. Feel that tension. That's the sweet spot right there, all right? Any more, it's gonna start binding. Any less, it's moving too freely. I feel the vibration coming through here. This is a perfect spot level right here, all right? We're gonna go just move the carriage over. We're gonna do the same thing on this corner. And I can see, that just with my eyes, I can see that I've got too much, or, or too, uh, not enough gap in there. So we're gonna head and just tighten this up a little bit. Put the paper under there. All right, we're moving freely. Slowly turning, keeping it moving. All right, and you see that? I just now it's binding up. It's a little too much. Back it off a little bit, and just look that that just that little bit of degree makes a difference between it binding and not. So we want pretty much right in the middle of those two. All right, so it's moving freely, but just a little bit more. All right, here we go. And now I'm just starting to get that tension. You notice the papers. I can see a little bit of friction on here, but it's not making the paper completely fold up. If I actually go a little bit more here, now I can't slide the receipt at all, and it's pinching, okay? So nice and easy. All right, that's good. We're gonna move the bed forward. And then about an inch and a half in right here. As we adjust these other corners, we're actually disrupting this corner. And even though we might start off with this like bigger gap, every time we go and start leveling, we'll notice that the adjustments get less and less and less until we're at that perfect spot. And then we're gonna just keep going around. And you may have to do this three times, five times. Typically for me, I do three, maybe four times going around until basically I'm finding that I'm not really making any adjustment. Or if I do, it's just so incremental, maybe one degree. And then I think that that's a good spot to just say, okay, we're good. That should be good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and hit print. And now, as it's starting to print here, I have this set for skirt, and I definitely recommend, especially as a beginner, that you go ahead and run the skirt. And I usually suggest maybe like three perimeters here. And what that'll do is that'll give us a chance to sort of really be sure that we've got a nice, even bed level. What we're looking for is the lines to be going down consistently on all of the corners. If we see, okay, looking really good, nice and consistent. I can see all my lines are connected here. Here's a quick little demonstration so you know what to look for, whether you're getting too little gap or too much. Now this bed I deliberately canted at an angle like so. On this side of the bed, it is the bed is touching the nozzle. And on this side, I have a very large gap. So if you notice here, immediately super thin, this is the nozzle literally just scraping along the glass, trying to force out whatever it can. Sort of creates this almost thin, translucent look. I did hear a little uh, extruder pops 
from the, uh, when I was sprinting, and that just means the filament is just not even flowing, can cause a clogging, clogging issue. As we go along here, you'll notice there's these little ridges here, kind of like little valleys. This is uh, basically causing an over-extrusion issue. The nozzle is still too close, it is flowing, but the plastic doesn't know where to go. It's trying to extrude a certain amount of plastic for a certain amount of space, and there's basically not enough space, so it starts squishing off to the sides. And then coming down here, this was actually looks very good. This is a perfect uh, good adhesion. Everything looks really nice in this sort of little short band here. And then as we come along here, we're starting to get a little bit too much gap, and you'll notice that there's these little hairlines uh, in between each of the lines that are being extruded. This is too much gap, and we're not getting that squish of the layers that's sort of pressing against the other sides. So normally this would all be filled in because you're getting a little squish. The filament sort of flows off to the sides and connects everything up. And then as we get over here, we're getting into a serious too much gap situation. There's all these holes and pockets here. This is a good indicator that the nozzle is just extruding in the air. It's not really bonding very well or very little. This is not even connected. You'll get all these little weird uh, things like this. And then you'll notice on the skirt, normally this is supposed to be round like this, but because it's printing in the air as it's coming around here, uh, the filament is not bonding at all. In fact, there's look, you can see it, it's a little bit of movement here. Um, it's basically going to the path of least resistance. You'll sort of see the straight line. And that normally went over here, but as it shrank up, it, it, it uh, went straight like this. And you can see these little gaps in the lines here. This is uh, very typical what you'd see if you've got too much gap. So that's basically it. Uh, too much gap here, you need to lower the nozzle. This area right here is really nice. And then right here, we're definitely too close to the bed with the nozzle and we're basically creating an issue where the filament can't flow. That's pretty much going to wrap up this video on how to level the bed using the paper technique. Uh, this is one of these tricky techniques. It's kind of a knack to get the handle of it. Also, you have paper that has different thicknesses. Um, I do think the thermal receipt does give a little more consistent results. Um, if you're interested in learning how to use the feeler gauge method, I will throw a link in the description up here for you on that. This is definitely a much more consistent method and you can have varying levels or different the thicknesses of the feeler gauge, give you a little bit more adjustability and see what works for you. Um, if you have a question regarding this video, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below. I will try to get back to you within about 24 hours. Also in the description, I will have links for uh, you know, micrometers and filament and all the different things, the 3D printers and all that kind of stuff if you're interested in. I'll have links down below. If you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe down below. You know, it totally blows my mind. It gets me super excited to produce this content for you. But until that next video, I'm out.